Yeah, super easy. Born and raised Southern California, um, right here, Los Angeles. Uh, went to college in New York, studied economics and psychology, kind of wound a career through uh, finance and social impact, social work, um, before finding blockchain. And blockchain was the financial architecture that I had been so desperately seeking to effectuate the type of change that I wanted in this world. And the Museum of Crypto Art was the project to manifest that change. Uh, and it was the artwork that was speaking the visual language to blockchain philosophy, um, ideals and tenets that I wanted to try and find a way to kind of hack into other people. Um, and that was really the, the genesis of the project. Super, super lovely. Uh, I mean, these people are like my dearest friends. And as many of them, some of them, many, uh, I had even never met before in real life. Uh, they've flown from all over the world to be here. And I think they did it because um, they have something important to share. And there's just so much trust that this community has in each other. And I think we got to see a lot of just like the humanity, the love, the yearning for a different system that begins to value the individual and the artist. I mean, for me, it's so, uh, I mean, they do art, right? Do I do art? I don't know. No, maybe. Yes, I design experiences and I curate shows and I think more, uh, the art that I used to do was collage work and this is collage work. Um, this is about like stitching the fabric of our reality. So my art is kind of this. <laughs> I mean, there's the real answer, and then there's the answer that I'm going to give you. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's hard as individuals to uh, notice the wave that you're in. Right? And for me, depth and breadth of the movement um, is, is powered by the reclamation of individual sovereignty. And the more people that begin to aspire to be themselves and discover themselves and not be told what to do, it is kind of the awakening of the individual one by one, the recognition that everybody is their own artist and being an artist is nothing more than being able to manifest and create your visions. Um, so anybody that is able to do that is, of course, like worthy of this love of the universe because you have actualized. I have a, there's a million people I wish could have spoke. But I think the people that spoke were the right people to speak because they were the people that said yes. <laughs> I like stuff I'm buying? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, this is weird, but I like this guy. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I've been obsessing over this guy's work, but he goes by the name Die With The Most Likes. And he has um, an obsession with, with ground beef. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Um, it's like hyper uh, critical of like our 
ultra consumerist capitalist society and you know the information the the ground beef is kind of a metaphor for like that just chunked meat that people are being fed um and it's it's like grotesque and sick and it really has been speaking to me lately um the the art that you connect with is priceless so to pay any price for the art that connects with you is cheap uh i think it is unfortunate that we've chosen twitter as the primary place of discourse i think it's proving insufficient to the types of conversations that we should be having um and i think it's like disingenuously allowing people who market or engagement farm or resort to what i would effectively call low tactics it's just if effectively like promoting a cultural race to the bottom um in which the space constantly gets diluted by its sheer speed um so it's obviously not an issue for somebody like me who's been there but anybody beginning to access and engage with the dialogue i certainly worry about what their entrance to the space might be like um I believe people put order in place to keep people in positions, right? I believe that the solidification of of power is is fundamental to order and I think that is uh antithetical to disruption and change. Um we are literally dealing with exponential tech that is giving individuals like myself the power of what would have been a hedge fund in the 90s. Um and it's just ridiculous it's like to begin to try and like constrain and structure and order like you will lose like the music industry did not win against like kaza or torrenting or seeding like no matter what you try to control there is a global zeitgeist uh that will far outstrip any ability to control it because every day through technology individuals are being empowered to move fist move faster uh break things and effectively uh take away the power from these archaic and solidified structures I mean is I don't I, you know look like this is uh I paint dollar bills I paint dollar bills to give them value right like the it's the the significance is it's like a reclamation of of one it's the destruction of government property which i'm kind of into um and two it's like a reclamation of value right and basically saying that like this is something that is also very sterile right a dollar bill is something that's very sterile to like give it life is to give it new meaning which is to give people the ability to reconsider what that means and as many people said today like we are literally playing with value the abstraction of value um and who to trust to be the provider and confer of that value to me why why is the US dollar valuable well because it's backed by a global military and frankly that's it and and the american citizens generally like agree that it's valuable and use it as a medium of exchange it was beads it was clamshells there's been you know it was at one point gold that was backing dollars um they continue to print more money uh inflation is real and we have to begin to recognize that perhaps there are better ways to value um this world and our relationships within it oh like peace love and blessings to everybody <laughs> you know like uh give give more value than you take 
that's what Brian said today. That really stuck with me. Um, what Lady Phoenix said, you know, like life is short, beat by beat. Capitalists will make you pay for the oxygen you breathe. Uh, they will suck you dry. So recognize who you are, recognize what you stand for. If you don't have values, if you don't know who you are, like step back and interrogate it. Uh, there's a million ways to do it, but sit with yourself. Think about what has been fed and what you have consumed and and how you are a product and and we need to begin to like save ourselves from ourselves and the only way to do it is with like love kindness and guidance there is a structural breaking of the world so um in that journey i wish everybody safe travels <laughs>